Tomorrowland is one of a kind. It's the largest EDM festival in the world and lives up to that name. During the day, the stages and grounds are stunning, but at night it turns into a whole other wonderland. Tomorrowland transforms the sleepy town of Boom into a booming metropolis for a few weekends in July, with over 400,000 people coming worldwide to live today, love tomorrow, and unite forever. Our goal was to visit all 16 stages, find the mystery 17th stage, and go on as many side quests as possible. Our first stop was the Rave Cave, a small stage under the bridge. We came back here a few times throughout the weekend. It's important to note that you get a bracelet before the festival that you can load money on to purchase food, drinks, and water. If you load the money on before the festival starts, you can get an automatic refund, otherwise you'll need to request it. Food and drinks were relatively inexpensive, with beer starting at 4 to $5 and some food starting around 13 to 15 During the day, many outdoor sets had confetti cannons, streamers, and fireballs accompany the music. Most of the indoor stages typically had light shows similar to most clubs. The Freedom Tent had these really cool butterfly screens that moved to the music. We got to see Medusa and Dom Doll here. We even got to see some interesting totems bopping along to the music. When we emerged, we saw an entirely new festival all glowing in the dark. The shell-themed stage was particularly impressive, as was the main stage. The main stage takes an average of two years to design and build, since a lot of the fixtures are 3D printed. I typically wear kaleidoscope glasses when I go to EDM clubs, but the amount of lights and fireworks, confetti, happening was overstimulating. It was time for some side quests. There was a scavenger hunt throughout the festival that was Tulum themed. In the app there were hints about a variety of places to check and if you collected all 12 you can gain access to the secret 17th stage. It was a really fun adventure and we found a lot of random things like this absolute vodka slide and this old spice party boat. They will spray you with deodorant if you have been dancing up a sweat. <laughs> Now for one of the most notorious must-go-to places, Moose Bar. It gave me Montana crossed with Russia with a little bit of Oktoberfest vibes. The core stage had a pretty cool structure, but was harder to get to and was in the more secluded portion of the forest. There was a decent amount of seating in the back if your feet get tired. By the end of the weekend, I had danced over 65 miles, so I definitely recommend sitting when you get a chance. This is the library. Tomorrowland likes to reuse stages as much as they can. A few years back, I believe that this was part of the main stage that was repurposed into this new life. We mostly spent our time here, at main stage, in the freedom stage. Lost Frequencies had one of the best sets at the festival here. This is atmosphere. It reminded me of a big circus tent. It wasn't super crowded when we went, so we were actually able to get behind the DJ booth. We then made our way to the Crystal Garden to watch John Summit. I'm pretty sure every American was there on that island. We met a few other people from San Francisco and some from New York and Boston. The lights at night were pretty cool. We finished the festival with the marathon of Tiesto then David Guetta on the main stage. Definitely suggest using the looker's left entrance to get a seat on the far hill and take in the show. Thanks for joining and I hope you enjoy the rest of the festival as we did.